This animation explains requirements for protruding objects in the ADA and ABA standards. Objects that protrude into circulation paths from walls or posts can be hazardous to people with vision impairments. Common examples include shelves, sconces, signs, kiosks, drinking fountains, and monitors. The ADA and ABA standards set limits on the projection of such objects depending on their mounting height. Since people with vision impairments may not need to travel along accessible routes, requirements for protruding objects apply to all circulation paths, including inaccessible routes. Unlike most other provisions in the standards, they are not limited to accessible routes or spaces and encompass all ways of passage for pedestrian travel, including walks, hallways, stairways, ramps, elevators and lifts, and courtyards. The requirements apply to the entire width of circulation paths. Both interior and exterior circulation paths are covered by these provisions. People who are blind or who have low vision sometimes travel along walls for orientation or wayfinding, particularly in unfamiliar environments. This technique is known as trailing or shorelining. Objects that protrude into circulation paths from walls, columns, and other surfaces that are above the standard sweep of long canes are hazardous unless properly treated. Objects that are mounted above a height of 80 inches provide minimum headroom clearance and can protrude any amount. Those with leading edges at or below 27 inches above the floor or ground can project any distance from wall surfaces because they can be detected by long canes without body contact. Providing detectability at heights well below 27 inches will allow more response time, especially for people of short stature, children, and users of short canes. Protruding objects with leading edges above 27 inches, but no more than 80 inches high, are within the hazard zone. They are limited to a protrusion of 4 inches, or in the case of handrails, 4.5 inches. Objects in this range that exceed this limit must be properly treated so that they do not pose safety hazards. One option for elements not required to be within reach is to locate them so that they provide a headroom clearance of at least 80 inches. Examples include signs not required to be tactile and sconces. Another solution is to limit an object's projection into circulation paths to 4 inches, such as a counter at a service window or the counter can be partially enclosed so that it's detectable within the 27-inch high maximum cane sweep. The leading edge of the counter cannot project more than 4 inches from the detectable portion that is within cane sweep. A side approach for wheelchair access is permitted to sales and service counters. However, at other elements where a forward approach is required or preferred, solutions cannot obstruct required clearances for knees and toes. Side panels provide a solution that will accommodate access for a forward approach. In all cases, solutions must be fixed or built in so that they remain reliably in place. In new construction and alterations, movable elements or furnishings are not acceptable alternatives in treating protruding objects. Extended wall surfaces and fixed cabinets or enclosures below protruding objects can be used at other elements, such as monitors. Treatments must extend to within 4 inches of the leading edge of the protrusion. Note that some solutions may impact the height of operable parts or controls that are required to be within accessible reach range. The maximum height is reduced when the reach extends over an obstruction beyond a certain depth. Another option is to recess objects so that the projection into circulation paths does not exceed 4 inches. This is often a good solution for cabinets, shelves, and display cases. Fixtures, such as cantilevered drinking fountains, can be recessed in alcoves. Fixed objects, such as benches, planters, or partitions, can be used to recess objects and to provide barriers on both sides of a protruding object. When recessing other types of elements in alcoves, be sure to accommodate the clear floor space that is required for wheelchair access. Wheelchair accessible drinking fountains must provide a knee clearance at least 27 inches high. If they are located so they provide but do not exceed this clearance, they do not require treatment as a protruding object, 
since the leading edge is on the boundary of cane detection. Wheelchair accessible units or bowls providing a knee clearance of exactly 27 inches can be used to enclose one side of cantilever drinking fountains that are above the 27 inch height to serve standees. These requirements are not limited to wall mounted objects. They also apply to objects mounted to partitions, columns, counters, and other elements such as standpipes. Standalone objects that are fixed or built in are covered as well where they protrude into circulation paths. Examples include some types of kiosks and sculptures. In the case of a fixed sculpture, a platform or base can be used to provide cane detectability at hazardous protrusions. The platform or base should be high enough so that it is not mistaken for a curb or step. A height of about a foot will be sufficient, although the standards do not specify a minimum. Railings and similar elements that provide a leading edge no higher than 27 inches also can be used. Barriers or bases must extend to within 4 inches of protrusions in the hazard zone. Even better, consider extending them up to or beyond the leading edge of hazardous protrusions. The standards also address protruding objects mounted on posts or pylons, such as signs. As with wall-mounted objects, restrictions apply to objects with leading edges within the 27-inch to 80-inch height range. These objects, however, are limited to a 12-inch protrusion into circulation paths. It's advisable to limit their projection to 4 inches as is required for wall-mounted objects. A 4-inch limit is also specified for post-mounted or freestanding objects along streets and sidewalks in new guidelines the Board is developing for public rights of ways. At an element, such as a map or display on posts, compliance can be achieved by limiting projections from posts to 12 inches. Leading edges located within 27 inches from the floor, like a horizontal rail, also will suffice in providing detectability within cane sweep. If the object is mounted so that the leading edge is no higher than 27 inches, no additional treatment is required. Maintaining a 27-inch clearance will accommodate knee clearance, which is important where forward approach access to an element is required. In this case, such clearance will provide a closer approach for wheelchair access to the display. These requirements apply to all sides of an object that can be approached from circulation paths. Headroom clearance of at least 80 inches is required along all circulation paths. Objects suspended from ceilings or mounted on walls cannot protrude into this minimum clearance. Treatments for detectability are required where the vertical clearance along circulation paths is less than 80 inches, such as below stairways that are not enclosed. This can be achieved with fixed or built-in objects like planters, benches, railings, and other elements that provide an effective barrier. Platforms or similar treatments should be high enough so that they are not mistaken for a step. It's important that solutions be designed so that they do not pose tripping hazards. These requirements also apply to curved or sloped walls that reduce vertical clearance below 80 inches along circulation paths. When railings are used, they must be mounted so that they provide a defined and detectable edge that is located no more than 27 inches high. In the case of sloped walls, if the depth does not exceed 4 inches up to a height of 80 inches, further treatment is not required. Otherwise, if the depth exceeds 4 inches, railings or other barriers must be provided. Further guidance on protruding objects and other requirements in the ADA and ABA standards is available from the U.S. Access Board. This animation was developed by the U.S. Access Board in cooperation with the federal agencies that issue the ADA and ABA standards.